Hey everybody! Hello! Welcome and good time zone! Happy day! Happy day! We are grateful to have you joining us for a very special guest! So special! So special! Yes! It is indeed Shannon Woodward who plays Dina in The Last of Us Part 2 among many other characters. You mm -hmm. may recognize her mm -hmm. from Westworld. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you guys are big fans. Look at this! I see a lot of only Shans here! Yay! Yo, what's up? A wonder human! <laughs> um, it's yes. good, uh, good news! Uh, uh, I'm so grateful for you guys being here. This is a lot of fun. We're doing a new thing on Fridays where we do these like zen chill streams where we just hang out and uh, we're going to start to have some more and more guests come and join us. Yes. And uh, this is really awesome. I see a lot of people from Shannon's wow, community. Wow, those are cute emotes. I like those hype emotes. Super hype. And you guys, if you want to check out Shannon on Twitch, she's also a streamer, uh, exclamation point Shannon in the chat will get you there. You can follow her on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Twitch at Shannon is live. And uh, she'll even be streaming later today, mm -hmm. uh, in fact. Yo, I see a lot of you guys here, and if you have questions for Shannon, you can tag at Deckart Games in the chat, and the moderators are gonna pull them into a top secret room, which is so secret, it's called Q&A. Yes. And uh, we're gonna pull your questions to chat with Shannon for a while. And just a moment to say thank you to our moderators and our thank lieutenants. You. Appreciate you guys. We're gonna do our best to keep things spoiler free. We have completed The Last of Us Part Two, but we know a lot of you may not have. Uh, so if you have any questions that pertain specific to spoilery kind of things, uh, we may kind of round uh, yeah. round around it, you know what I mean? Round the rugged rocks, the rugged rascal ran. Moreover, <laughs> Olivia Rose Goldilocks with a gift sub group hug. Thank you so much, friend. Thank you, guys. If you have one of those gift subs, uh, check out the starter kit. We have a mm -hmm. starter kit that shows you a way around the channel. You can come join us in our two subscriber chats up on Discord, Zen Garden and Jericho for old time's sake. And Gemma the Rose, thank you for the gift subs as well. Thank you. Uh, all of our gift subs. All of our gift sub givers are entered in 10 times to our giveaway. We have our Play the Positive pin mm -hmm. uh, that is super substantial fun mm -hmm. pin. And we sign a thank you postcard to say thank you for joining us on stream. I totally stabbed my fingers twice. She Hitting did. Those. So if you're lucky, one of, one of them has a little a little drop of Amelia's blood. Good for cloning. Let mm -hmm. me know if you pull it off. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oof, yeah, Oof, that's indeed. right. But we did just mail off a bunch of our prizes, mm -hmm. so thank you guys for your patience. We've been shipping them out about once a month, and we're playing catch up on all these new Play the Positive pins. Yes. Brazil is here, Cosmic Georgie is here. How you doing? Roger Butler's back for six months. Uh, we're gonna jump over to our guest very quickly Let's because it. Uh, it is so awesome to have Shannon here with us. I don't wanna Keep miss a waiting. single moment. No, no, let's do um, it. So we're gonna do it like this. And uh, also, real quick, Amelia, what are you starting tomorrow? What are you playing? Oh. Tomorrow, we are beginning Uncharted, The Lost Legacies, and, or Legacy, but maybe there's two, we don't know. We don't no. know, we don't but, know. But um, we have a really awesome prize. Um, we are going to be giving away a Blue Yeti microphone. So yep. we wanna hook one of you all up, so join us tomorrow two hours earlier than whatever time it is for you right now. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play some games. We're super stoked about it. And Ghost of Tsushima continues on Sundays at the same time. And thank you guys all for these questions. Whoa, right. 5H31LA, thank you for the gift sub group hug again. Thank you, friend. All right, uh, we're gonna unmute ourselves and we're gonna add a add a little uh, Shannon to the pool. Thank you so much, Shannon. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for joining us live. Shannon is live. You're You're a Twitch streamer now. Yeah, I've been streaming on Twitch. I think this is this is for like six weeks now. Wow. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. I see a lot of folks from your community here right now, yes. and and you got some awesome emotes. We what is? Do. Tell us about these emotes. You know, I I can't take credit for most of them because my own community really th there's a lot of graphic design talent that hangs uh -huh. out in our chat, and they. Uh, They've made a lot of these really great emotes, mostly of me making ridiculous faces, um, which is great. I yeah, like the it. Hype. The hype is real. The hype is strong. I think I, I like the one. What is this one with the, with the little fuzzy things around you? Oh, so what is some kind of seed. You're a this, tumbleweed. Oh, okay. <laughs> before I had this fan. Oh, right. Uh, so my community calls themselves the Only Shans, but then Clever. there's a faction of the Only Shans that calls themselves the Chaos Cowboys. So ah. there was some Western theme happening in there with like perhaps a lonely tumbleweed or, uh, you know, as you do. We've got a yeehaw emote. We do. Uh, have you been known to say yeehaw? Oh yeah, the Chaos Cowboys say a lot of yeehaw. Yeah! 
Yeehaw! I love a good yeehaw. yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Shannon, uh, thanks again for joining us. We've let everybody on the stream know they can tag us uh, mm -hmm. with questions, so we'll pull them uh, from our chat here. Yes. And um, I mean, should we just start at the very Let's, beginning? They, they, uh, they are so hyped about, we finished our playthrough of The Last of Us Part Two, so most of our questions for you will focus probably on Dina. Great. But if you're down to talk about uh, Westworld, Westworld or any other projects, uh, cool. we're happy to spread it out. Whatever. Cool. What do you got, Amelia? All right. From R.A. Bucks 23, what was it like working on The Last of Us 2 and Westworld? So just tell us everything and we'll sit here Generally. and listen. Yeah, so uh, here, here it goes. Um, well, I mean, you know, both were really special. I mean, Westworld is wild because, you know, I've never really worked on anything that had that much money before to, like, make a practical reality. So... We weren't using green screen that much. I mean, certainly for some bits, but a lot of the stuff was built pretty practically, especially like a lot of the behavior lab set stuff or, uh, I mean, so that that was wild to like not have to suspend disbelief made my yeah. job easy. And I think I started to believe it. Um, wow. But yeah, that was that was really cool. And I'm, I, I'm just such a sci-fi nerd that um, that was like a real... That was, it was, I mean, amongst all the other amazing people on the show and stuff like that. It was just like, for me, it was, it was like a real nerd out. And the same with, you know, The Last of Us. I, I was a massive fan of the first game. And actually one of the writers in the first season of the game, or of, of Westworld, ended up co-writing The Last of Us Part Two, And Ooh, she very was cool. um, kind of, at first, I think maybe like moonlighting over our first season hiatus over there. And I saw it sorry at a birthday party and you know we become pretty good friends at this point and i was like so what are you doing on the hiatus and she was like oh i'm, I'm actually just moonlighting at this video game company i was like oh i play a ton of video games like what company and she was like a naughty dog and i was like like uncharted 4 had just come out lost legacy was about to come out and i was like well, what are you guys working on like the last of us too and she was like went white and was like i can't i can't talk about it because the game hadn't been announced yet even and i was like oh my right. god i love that game i was like tell neil Druckmann i would die to have a role or like a, a line in the game like as a bit you know like, like yeah 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 be like get down you know that's what i meant <laughs> oh my god and it kind of went back and forth she was like oh well he likes the show and it went back and forth until i think like six months later i saw her at a game night she's like so there's a role but you'd have to read and i was like that's fine i love to read um <laughs> yeah, reading is me, pretty I I, like, pretty really awesome stalked my way in that's wow. amazing good for you yeah so that's when they so were cool. like you got the job i was like you're kidding um, <laughs> yo, wow. yo i gotta i gotta shout out to data wizards right now that's get data wizard game do you know this data do i know data data is the wizard of our discord he is my like King mod, he has made everything possible for me in terms of like. Well, let's get some mod love for this yeah, data. This awesome. is what we do. Yes. We praise our mods. Thank you, mod. That's my dude. Uh, a big hug uh, to you, data. Thank you for the love. Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> wow, um, that's a really cool story. Yeah, that was, was. So you like planted the seed way before it was even a a seed. It was certainly organic, you know. Um, mm. Not to make a seed joke, but. Um, <laughs> But no, it, we it, like it, I didn't really mean to, um, but it was, it was like, you know, I, I loved the game. I had thoughts about like what I wanted to do tonally and, you know, and, and, uh, that worked out and that really rarely happens. So it was nice. Wow. You love to see it. <laughs> yeah. You love to cool. see it. You love to see it. Well, and it's cool when the world, you know, crisscrosses back again, when you work with people that then they get, they're working again and you get to see them on other projects. And I mean, had you worked with any of the other cast before from the last of us part two? Uh, well, Jeffrey Wright was, is in the last of us two. Um, but that kind of happened cause I was working on the game already when we were shooting the second season and his um, teenage son is a really big fan, and I always play PlayStation in my trailer, like sitting around, because I can't like read or do puzzles or anything in between. It kind of it, it puts me in a different brain space. But playing video games is like putting my brain on pause for some reason. Yeah. So I was playing all the time, and so I'd start being like, you know, you can play my PlayStation when I'm shooting with your dad, like if you want to borrow it. And he's like, yeah, really? And I was like, yeah, I've got The Last of Us on there if you want to play. And, then he was like, oh, you know, I'm a really big fan. And so I kind of took him into Naughty Dog one day and showed him around. And then, you know, after a little while, I think Jeffrey and Neil talked. And Jeffrey was like, I mean, I got to be in this game because my kid just thinks it's cool, you know. 
<laughs> That's kids. awesome. Wow. Um, yeah, and it, I mean, I have really nothing to do with it. I really think I should credit Elijah, Jeffrey's son. <laughs> Aha, uh, indeed. But yeah, yeah, other than that, it, Hallie I'd worked with, Hallie Gross, who um, was the, I think, co-narrative lead is what her title is. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really know anyone else, no, at all. Ashley mm. and I had never met till we tested together. Really? Yeah. Cool. And this question actually comes from Hannah Powers, the HP 600. All right. And that rolls off the tongue. Newest model. Uh, what was it like working with Ashley Johnson on this? I mean, she's got such a huge fan base from the first game. People absolutely yeah. are so in love with Ellie and we're like dying to know what would happen with Ellie. Um, we we give the announcement at the beginning. We've completed the game, but we're going to try to avoid any spoilers uh, for anybody who's joining us and hasn't completed their playthrough yet. But what was that experience like? I mean, how long were you guys on set together for making a game as big as this? Uh... I mean, on and off for I think three and a half or four years. Wow. And then, you know, and then in the booth together a lot. Um, yeah, I think that's about, yeah, it was, it, it was a lot of time. I mean, you know, cause Ashley was shooting uh, a TV show Blind Spot in New York and I was doing Westworld here. So like they would try to put a lot of stuff whenever Ashley would be home or if she had some time to leave that show to come back so you know we would go sometimes like five or six months without shooting with us mm. together and they would shoot with other people and then you know like a lot of times like over like holiday break like i would go like right from westworld wrapping at like three in the morning and then on a saturday go to playa del rey to go to the motion capture stage and then just shoot with ashley for three days but like that never felt like work to me. Like I loved being in The Last of Us. Also, like there's no vanity in it. We're not wearing makeup. Like right. once we get the scene, we get the scene. I don't have to get it right 46 times in different angles. Like so, it felt like in a lot of ways, especially with because of Ashley. To get back to the question, like Ashley's just such an organic actress. She's so incredible and really one of the first performances I ever saw in a video game that moved me in a way where I was like oh I want to do that like now people are starting to move into this direction where there's like real narrative storytelling that is with you know subtle acting and the technology is good enough to kind of like support that and and it was really because of Ashley that I loved that game so much I mean obviously Troy's amazing and but that in particular was so nuanced so working with her was the easiest thing ever you know Wow. Oh, that's such that's good news. Um, did you get to do most of your, um, I mean, obviously you share many scenes together. Did you record all of the times that you're with Ellie in the game with your, your scene partner there? Did you ever have to do anything where you're just completely on your own in, in performance capture where they're going to cut it together because of no, scheduling? No, or did no. you we guys really have the scene? Our, yeah, we did our mocap together all the time. Yeah. Ah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of these scenes too were like, uh, we're very close to each other. So like we would shoot those things and like have our helmets off and then shoot them with them on. And then, um, but yeah, no, we were, we were always together. It was, and even in the booth, I think there's very little of the in-game dialogue. We weren't in the same, we weren't there together. They, they were really good about that and worked around everybody's. One time she was in New York and she was in my headset. But, but the rest, we were together in the room, yeah. That's amazing. Wow. And, yeah, and yeah. it shows, because, like, the chemistry between your two characters and all of these, like, little subtle moments and these, like, very human behaviors, uh, it's... Uh, you can tell so much story with the, just the energy between two people in a room and having you both there together, like uh, interviewing other actors from other games. We're amazed to hear how many actors are alone in a booth yeah. saying some stuff and then they hack it all together later. Yeah. Maybe they I don't mean, even there's meet a together lot after. That I did right. do by myself, but it wasn't, most of that stuff is like, you know, the stuff that's like, get down over there. There's a guy on your left. Turn uh, to your right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that stuff I did by myself or like all the systemic stuff. Um, we did separately, but you know, Ashley and I really connected immediately and became incredibly close and we still are very, very close. And, you know, we both are the same kind of actor where, and not every actor is like this. There's a lot of great actors that aren't like this at all that like, you know, if I change the way I speak, it changes the way she reacts. You know, she's very malleable. She really listens to me. So, mm -hmm. and because of that, it means that like every take we do is, is different. And it means that it's because like, if she changes, I change. And then it just becomes like exponentially different. So weirdly doing it without each other, there's a lot that would get lost, I think, within those reactions. And 
I've worked with a lot of people that are much better actors than I am that are just like, they do not do that. And I respect it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Whoa. Uh, that's amazing to have such a good scene partner. Yeah. Was this your first time doing language. performance? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Was this your first time doing performance capture? Yeah. Yeah. Or even any kind of vocal for performance at all. Like, uh, I've done some other stuff since then, but uh, before that, you know, I'd really only done television and film, but I loved games. So I was very familiar with like, I, 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 you know, was definitely a peanut gallery watching me like, oh, why do they do it like that? You know? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but it's well, hard. This question comes from, hmm. uh, from uh, Peta Bread, uh, who wants to take it all the way back to the very beginning, saying that you did some uh, work as an actor when you were a child. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're curious if you have any, any mentors or long-term people that you've worked with you know, since that time, or what was it like? I mean, I, I didn't start working professionally until my adult life, so I'm I'm curious what that was like. You know, working so young. When did you start acting? Uh, I started acting when I was, I think I was like six and a half or seven. Um, I I had started it just like, uh, well, I'll back up a little bit because it's a funny sure. story. My my mom was a professional figure skater. She's a right figure skating champion. So she was like, you know, a professional child. So that was like a thing that I think was like very normal to her as deranged as that may be. And I think I, she put me in gymnastics and I was kind of pursuing that professionally, but I blew out my knees really young, which is something that happened to her too. And then she was like, well, what am I going to do with you now? And I was like, well, I keep telling you I want to be inside the TV box. And she was like, that's not a job you can have. Like you can't just do that. And so I kind of became obsessed with the idea that, that that's what I would do because it's what my parents seemed to think was impossible. Hmm. So I, I, they, they did eventually let me start just doing some play at a local children's theater and then some scout from Nickelodeon saw me and then I like free audition and audition and I got like a, a pilot and they called to tell me I got it and my parents were like, uh, you know, you'll never go to another birthday party again. This is, uh, yeah, just, I mean, you can do it. We're not going to stop you, but it's just really going to change your life. And I was like, oh, well, I do like birthday parties. I'd like to get invited to birthday parties. So I didn't do it. And then a few months no, later, I was like, do no. you want to maybe do a, like a guest star, like something, a shorter commitment? And I was like, yeah, I think that sounds fine. And so I did an episode <laughs> of Clarissa Explains It All, which let me tell you. <gasps> no way. Yes first, way. I, if somebody has a link to it, they should post it in the chat because it's on. It's on the internet. I'm That's very awesome. small. Um, and I'm no Dakota Fanning. I'll tell you uh, ahead of time. Uh, like I wasn't particularly talented. Precocious, but. Um, Precocious will get you a long way. It might even get you I cast know. in The Last of Us Part Two. Turns out. I, I hope I got better to, <laughs> in the in the time spanning between <laughs> six and and uh, eighteen. But yeah, no, uh, it's so I kind of started then, and my parents then would let me kind of audition and work a little bit locally. But anytime I would make a tape for something to, for Los Angeles, and they'd be like, "Do you want to come out to read?" My parents were like, "You're not doing that." But I moved out here uh, when I was about 16 and I started working then and kind of figured it out as I went along. And I, I started working a lot by the time I was about 21. So it took like, you know, four or five years. Yeah. But um, I, I don't I don't know that I had any like, you know, mentors over the whole period. But, you know, certainly a lot of people I worked with that I, I learned a lot from, you know. Um, yeah. But, that's kind of how I ended up acting. It's a really weird story. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome though. Wow. I, I, I think I'm a little bit of an actor by contrarian as well. Like my, my dad was decidedly, you know, uh, in corporate America and marketing. And so my whole thing was like, I gotta be on the thing that's furthest from mm. that, you know? Uh, and then you come up with a, being an actor <laughs> and you're like, uh, 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 and here we are, of course, using social media marketing and uh, yeah. self-producing and you know, it all comes back around. Do you do any figure skating? No, I, the thing is my mom was like very, very good and I was just kind of mildly talented. So I kind of just moved away from the, the idea. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's very cold in there. And yeah. when you fall, you have to hit ice. And that just no. seems like that and maybe like fire pit walking. I'm kind of like, why? <laughs> why the extremes, everybody? Yeah, I don't like to be cold. It's a hallmark of my personality. 
Um, so I, I, have to, I have to know, are you invited to birthday parties now, even though you are an actor? Yeah, I mean, when like, was the last time you've been? A, oh, God, she just starts weeping and touch it. Oh, <laughs> You can I will come to invite Amel- you to my birthday Amelia's party. Amelia's birthday is in November. You can come. <laughs> Thank you. I've been it might be digital or now. masked. Or... <laughs> I did get vaccinated yesterday. That's true. That's a good. Whole thing. I tested it. I think it worked. Um, but uh, yes, I miss birthday parties. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I guess I do. Now it's a lot of Zoom parties. Right. Yeah, uh, my my birthday was my my birthday is March seventeenth, but it was right before we went into the safer at home oh thing. God, like so I had a small group of people over, and it was like everybody was really awkward around each other. It felt <laughs> super. It was like prohibition. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was like everyone's like, we should do this. Like Nobody I'm gonna hug really you, but knows I'm... either. Like we kind of didn't know then. It... it was the very end. Yo, I got a shout yeah. out to. I think this Nikki. you you may know it's Nikki. Yeah, that's my. Is this Nikki. a friend of yours? That's your Nikki. Nikki and Dada are going crazy with these gift oh, subs. Oh, thank you so uh, much, friends. Thank you guys for welcoming everybody in. And and a reminder that you can follow uh, Shannon on Twitch. Her channel is Shannon is live and exclamation point Shannon or exclamation point Dina or exclamation point guest mm-hmm. will get you there. And Cowboy Carrot, thank you Carrot. as well. Aww. That's awesome. The only Shans, ride at dawn. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool that you've got such a close-knit community and within such a quick time of streaming i mean yeah, uh awesome. you're a partner on twitch which is awesome what kind of games are you are you streaming right now uh so right now well i let our community vote on on the games that we're playing and we actually had uh we had a tie where i think it was like 1100 votes each with a four vote count different different so we're playing now we're playing bioshock on okay. wednesdays and thursdays and then we're playing Life is Strange on Sundays. So those nice. are the two games nice. playing. And then on Friday, which is today at like 6 p.m. Pacific, I do a nerd power hour where I do like the crossword and then like the spelling bee and some of the New York Times puzzles that we can do together that's pretty fun. Oh, oh that's cool. super cool. Nice. Well, you're covering quite a range yes. between, uh, you know, Life is Strange and Bioshock. It's like you're going like to need those. I feel like it represents me. Good. <laughs> where where are you in in Life is Strange? We, I literally just started it last Sunday, so we did chapter one on Sunday. So we'll be doing chapter two this week. Oh, are you're we? in for it. Oh, you're I in know. For I I mean, the chat's been really good at not spoiling it, but I I know nothing about it other than there's good. sadness. That's all I know. There is. Yeah. Oh, but yes. good sadness. I mean, I personally like when a game like hits me so hard that I'm just like crying over all the characters like that's great storytelling absolutely i mean that's that's really what started getting me back into games was when people started making narrative stuff again that was just like or for the first time that i was like oh this is is, it kind of accelerates the idea of a novel it like adds a fourth dimension because you're making the choices instead of witnessing them and yeah Absolutely. Well, and and playing through, you know, the the stakes of, for instance, The Last of Us Part Two, since we're here talking about Dina, is that yeah. the holy cow! It's Nikki. <laughs> it's Nikki, thank Nikki you. is it's the Nick- ultimate most generous human, and so is Data and Carrot. Wow. Yo, we appreciate you guys. So generous. Uh, thank you. That's very kind. We have this gift sub effect that I will do so that you know we're going through hyperspace of hype. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the, I guess the, the thing is, is like, as it puts you in the hot seat so much more when you're emotionally invested in these characters and their relationships. And like, there were times playing through the last of us, uh, that without that, like I've played a lot of games that I'm not particularly good at, right? Like I've, I've failed and got the, you're dead and I got to go again thing enough times. (laughs) But in the last of us part two, it was so hard on me every time that this would happen. Um, it's, you know, not just because of the dogs. That was a, that was a particularly difficult. My dogs found the mailman apparently. (laughs) Oh, Oh, we can't hear them. I don't think that's great. No, you got a great setup. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but like the the knowing what was waiting for us, you know, like trying to protect these characters that we love, um, really, really takes it to a whole other level. Especially when you're streaming, you're like, oh, I can't let them die, and in front of everyone, like yeah. again and again. Uh, how do you find playing games ver- uh, like for yourself versus when you're streaming them? Are, do you, are you playing anything on the side that's just for you, or do you like to stream every time you play something? Um. Well, you know, I hooked up my old Super Nintendo. 
a couple weeks ago and there were a bunch of things that I'd never played like Yoshi's Island and I streamed it for a little bit I did like a Sunday where I was just going through all these old games and stuff and then I kind of the next day I was like I kind of want to keep playing Yoshi's Island and I don't think we need to stream <laughs> that like and I just was like sitting here in my pajamas just and which was great but for the most part right now because I've been working so hard on you know working on my stream labs and kind of like getting everything set up and that right. you know a lot and like working on learning how to like edit the VODs and get a system going and I'm kind of mostly doing I'm doing a lot of stuff myself actually a lot of my community started to step up and help me and they're amazing and doing great things but a, a lot of the time that I think would usually be video game time I'm kind of spending working on the channel and stuff which is which is fun though I still kind of do Animal Crossing after dinner you know like while I watch TV. <laughs> yes that, that's still happens. keep the island up to date I see Amelia's got a, a question yeah. queued up here for you I have a, a good question from let it glow did playing Dina change your perspective on anything and how did that experience as an actor differ from being on TV um I'm not sure if it changed my perspective on anything, but also, you know, this is a story that I that I think I, I, it was sat with me for so long, you know, from the time they hired me and Neil, like, you know, pitched the whole game to me in a conference room after they hired me till when we finished the game. I mean, that was, I mean, it may have been, four and a half years I, I actually am not sure it's just such a long time and I, I think the themes are really important and I don't I don't want to spoil anything but you know I think I think about those themes a lot and I, I it's interesting because I, I see people fall into these kinds of patterns that I think the game represents a lot and you know and I see it just spin and spin and spin you know and even in microchasms and just like watching people internet conversations to the world at large to you know and i think that's just something that i i see and i i guess i see my role in it and hmm. try to extricate myself from the cycle of things and i think that that is a i hope that's not too vague i don't, I don't want to spoil anything no, no, no i no, got chills because <laughs> that that was one of the biggest parts for me about this game that i took away is this cycle of revenge that you get trapped in and the cycle of anger and then it's just like this perpetual cycle where you can't get out of it because everyone's just having to hurt the person who hurt them and then you're hurting the person who hurt them and then it's uh i i feel like it's very relevant, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I see it I see it in so many things, too. You know, like, you meet a new person and you immediately cast them in your head as playing a role. They are either your new ally, your new friend, or they're your rival, and you have to protect yourself from that person or take what's yours, or they're a love interest, and if that doesn't, act, you know, uh, work out the way you imagined it, then you're hurt, where sometimes, I, and I think to some extent, like, taking the idea of the cyclical narrative and like how we see each other just because of how stories tell us we're supposed to behave i think i do think that that has changed or it, it's created an awareness in me to mm. to notice how i instinctively see things or people or situations or get defensive and like you know actively try to take a step back and be like okay well what if that's not what this is like do you, sometimes it is you know sometimes you're like right, that, right. that's what's happening and other times you know it's projection and and there's actually room for really beautiful relationships to flourish in like letting people be just who they are to you and not how you cast them and i think the game has a you know a very intense way of developing that kind of experience or delivering that kind of experience it's really wonderful and you know like i said before though making the game like the a lot of the constraints that there are on performing uh in film don't exist in in the mocap medium and uh there's a lot of things that i really liked about i don't like sticking together to someone when we're trying to do very quiet intimate scenes and it's like, <laughs> like uh, oh, Sorry, I'm stuck to you. Sorry, uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> With the Velcro. Yeah, the hazards yeah. of Velcro. Yeah, like that I don't miss. But, but otherwise, you know, I loved logging myself into the computer every morning 
and being oh, like, yeah, I love yeah, that you're logging my body into the system and then you'll just turn my performance into data. As like a straight nerd loser, that is so cool to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing like seeing yourself as little points on a, like a constellation of yeah. Shannon, you know? Yeah. Yo, yeah. and speaking of data, data wizard's going crazy with oh these gift gosh, subs. He's the most kind. So um, and Nikki, we appreciate it. You guys are very generous. I see a lot of people also resubscribing and cheering. We're grateful for you guys. Uh, we'll we'll take some time to shout that out uh, after our Q and A here because we've got uh, lovely Shannon here with us to talk about everything. And uh, yo. <laughs> I, I, I could go on and on. like I almost I, I wonder like what do you think is the the, the clearance day? is it like a year after a game has come out we're allowed to just like speak about it normally like I, I there's so many things I want to say about this game and then as I'm about to say them I'm like but well, well, don't okay. rob anybody Wait, of that I have a question for the chat well, let's pull it have you all played this game because I mean you know, that's true we could just put a spoiler okay. notice yeah and... we could be like spoilers because Let's find out. What yeah. what do you guess, Shannon, is going to be the percentage of people who have played it themselves, watched it, or not not don't know anything, anything at all? It. Seeing a lot I of people. I would say we'll get into the high sixties that they've played it, but I, okay. I also think there's a lot of people that you know want to wait for the PS Five, um, or okay. at least I see people say that sometimes. Um, well, this looks like a lot of people have played it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put it into the chat right yeah, now. You can type number one if you've played it, number two if you've watched it, or number three if you are know nothing at all and you don't want it spoiled. Well, um, then we might recommend you turn off the chat <laughs> for now or mute or just it. mute us and we'll be, we'll go like this when we're done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's there's less less than ten percent of people uh, would be spoiled. I think uh, it seems like oh, six. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be like six percent. Yeah, just just about. F All right, we can do okay. it. Okay, right. this is your spoiler warning. If yes. you're one of those six percent, uh, you know, mute it until you see me go I like will this. Do, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll know that that's over. <laughs> uh, the, okay. The thing you're saying about the the cycle of violence and this idea of basically everybody's trying to g regain control of their universe. Uh, it, each of these different factions, uh, if you are, thank you, Amelia. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a wolf, you see everything from the wolf's point of view. The scars, we've got the fireflies as they were, and all these different groups. And we see these same sort of factions exist today, politically, or when it gets into gaming, or when it comes to different communities yep. and things. And there's this idea of forcing control. I'm going to make it so that the wolf point of view is the only point of view. Right. The democratic point of view is the only point right. of view, the, whatever. And uh, and I guess the question that this game raised for me, which is tricky, is like, does it take more courage, strength, power, or whatever to not do something than it does to actually do it? Like, is it stronger to, hold, to, to pull back a punch? Are you a stronger person to not throw a punch than all of the strength it would take to throw the punch, mm. you know, and like that's this big theme for me is like in this game is like what are there things that I'm that I'm doing because I think that by doing them I'm you know kind of controlling my version of the universe or or having my will be done versus like what things could I not do that would still that would that would that would effectively produce a, a better version of that result. Hmm. Does that make sense? No, it, no, it makes total it. sense. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about what you're saying. I, I think you know, it's, it's interesting because I say this about Westworld too, as a joke, right? The idea of just like conflict in stories is set up this way, where like in the first episode, I'm like, let me just rebuild Evan Rachel Wood's character from the ground up, and then it'll be fine. And they're like, you, you stay away. You just go do your <laughs> job. And I'm like, you know, Westworld could have been a rom com. It could have been a rom com. <laughs> and it, but I, I think, you know, there's something to be said about The Last of Us in that case, too, where, you know, there's a lot of anger and grief. Like, I think the game is truly about grief, right? Like, it, it is about this cycle of violence, but at the core of it, it's about grief. And, and, and every character is grieving in some way, in a really serious way, and, and is making choices to deal with grief instead of dealing with grief. Mm. Mm. And, you know nothing's going to change that grieving process. And I, and I, I think that, you know, to some extent, like that's what I really take from it is, you know, if I punch them, am I going to feel better or am I just going to hurt someone and then have rightfully be shamed and feel shame and be right. actually just more it, 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 like further down the hole. And I, I think, you know, it, 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 
it, it makes me think a lot about how I handle things, even when I'm right, you know, even when I know I'm right. And I could just be like, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool. Like, instead, it's like, why don't you take a step <laughs> back and be like, I'm, I'm sorry if I swore and I'm not supposed to swear here. No, no, no yeah. fuck it. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it kind of makes me go, okay, well, what do I want out of this situation? And, and what is anger getting me in this situation? And, you know, pretty soon, if you deinstigate a, a scenario, suddenly instead of people throwing things, they say like, you know, I'm kind of sorry too. And, mm. and suddenly you have this new basis where you're like, oh, maybe we could be friends. And I think right. that's an important thing that I took from the game because it's such a, it's, it's really, it's hard. It's a really sad story. And it, I mean, the first time I played it, even though I, I knew it, everything that was going to happen, I was literally, I played it alone in a room at Naughty Dog right before the shutdown. And I like came home and I, or I went to meet my friends for dinner and I was like, yeah, I just finished playing the game. And, and all of a sudden, like a few minutes later, I was sat quietly with my head down going, <laughs> and like, not just crying, but I was still like, I was grieving. <laughs> and I was just like, this, this is too much grief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had we had the same effect after playing it that that for days afterwards yeah. we just couldn't and, and it and it hangs with you and I can only imagine like if you were really living through these experiences like the characters do. Yeah, I, I have mean, a video there's... of me playing the end of it. Actually, I haven't shown it to anyone. It just set oh. up my phone and it's the whole last forty minutes me like doing the whole. Oh thing. man, <laughs> brutal! I saw oh. it the other day on my phone and I was like, I can't even watch this. Yeah. Man, that last fight, I was just wrecked. Like it was I've been i I've never been so conflicted playing a game. Oh my gosh, it wrecked me. Yeah. Um it's there's a lot of a, a lot of people agreeing with you on the yeah. stream right now about about the story being about grief, not just about revenge and, and about how people are dealing with that. Um and you know Yeah. It's just um, <laughs> and this cowboy carrot's <laughs> going crazy with this, you know. Vlam, welcome back for 28 months. I wow. can't believe we've been streaming for 28 months, you guys. That's incredible. Congrats, that's amazing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, can I show you something? Our, our moderators made us a, a, a banner. I'm gonna show oh you. Oh my here. god, I'd love to see it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. A break in the studio. Um, isn't oh, this cool? That is so cool. Right? I was not much of an athlete growing up, but this is the closest I'll ever have oh to a pennant. Oh my god, look at that you know? pennant. You've got to hang Isn't it. Cool. Isn't that cool? I love it. Yep. Uh, we're super grateful for the community here and, and you sharing yours with us because I see so many people uh, just very excited to have these two worlds cross. I love guys. it. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad I'm glad the only shans are here. I'm happy to meet the Connor army. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we got to cover other people's questions. Yeah, more. yeah. So I have a question from Sin City Dave, uh, who asks about Dina's backstory, because um, we don't know very much about her backstory. Um, is there anything that you came up with that uh, really like fueled the character in particular, or that didn't make it on screen? Something that really like some some special thing? Um, not really. I mean, a lot of the stuff they built out like. It was, it's in the in-game dialogue, you know, and I kind of f found that after we'd really shot all the cutscenes and like, um, but you know, I'm not really like an actor that even does like a backstory thing. It's not really, because for me, when I try to think about a life that someone else has led and try to fit myself into it, I start, I think the things that are my strengths, they kind of disappear rather than mm -hmm. kind of finding things I identify with and themes I identify with and finding like where that fits in and how that feels for me, right? So it's like, I can harmonize with something that somebody else wrote. And so like, I can sing that melody. I know where that lives because I know where it lives in me. And so I try mm -hmm. to work from the inside out instead of the outside in. And I find that for me, I like I run up against a lot less barriers that way it, especially when it, you get to things where like well my character would never do this like i don't feel that way as much unless i'm like okay walk me through this like how do we get here and by the way mm. sometimes the answer is because the episode needs it you know and right. and that's right. just the truth right and like i can find it annoying but that's my job i gotta show up and you know i'm paint somebody else is writing it and i'm the paint and I gotta be egoless enough to understand that and i, I mean i did not have that issue at all doing the last of us I, 
I was excited to read every new nugget when I would go into a booth day and be like, oh, the synagogue stuff, this is cool, All right? Okay, cool. Like, oh, I had a sister, interesting, you know, like, but I read that and did it, you know, pretty much right away. And um, so I, I, I'm pretty sure that almost everything we did is is in the game. The only, only things are like, there was some stuff with Ellie and Dina in scenes that became other scenes that was like a scene, a monologue I, I tested with Ashley with that had, you know, kind of some more backstory about like their friendship before and mm. uh, when when Ellie had another girlfriend and Dina was with Jesse and some stuff like that, that at least I understood the tension that they intended for there to exist by the time this game started. But that scene just became, I think it really kind of eventually became the grow house scene. Um, right. Uh, it was that just, was you know, scene. yeah, it, it is. And we shot two different versions of that scene. It changed a lot and, um, but it's still the same scene. The core of the scene is the same thing. You know, the information, it comes and goes and doesn't really matter. Cause it's really about like making sure that the relationship feels correct, but also that Ellie is getting to the place that she needs to be for the story to kind of take off from that point and, you know, balancing other moments and stuff. But, but yeah, right. it, it is really, it's such a long game. It's, it's mostly all still there. Wow. Sorry, I hope that wasn't a boring answer. I tend no, to- No, that's that a was great, great answer. Yeah. We're just like enamored of you. <laughs> that's very sweet. <laughs> you know, I saw it somewhere in a, I don't know if it was a YouTube comment or something, but they said something about how Dina always shoots twice. Uh, when it comes to Dina with a gun, huh. what do you what do you know about like in the apocalyptic world? Um, you know, because we we see Ellie with a, a bow and arrow, with a shotgun, mm -hmm. with, and I feel like Dina's always got her handgun, right? Yeah. Um, did you did you do any kind of like arms training, or no, uh, do you I have think, experience with firearms? I think pretty much. I mean, I have before for other other jobs. Like I know how to to use it, and I did. There were some scenes where I had the handgun like in the scene, and then, but I think for most of the the in combat stuff like that mocap is a stunt double who you know actually like for most of the characters it's a stunt double doing all that stuff and right. they just and it's mostly just because like i remember asking I was like oh, i want to do it and they were like no you don't it's it's <laughs> gonna be like nine hours of that and you won't be able to walk like you will be so so and i was like got it yeah i'm not in that good of shape they're like this isn't like we're gonna you know just do a shot of you running and jumping and doing like blah, blah, blah. like this is like we're gonna do it sixty thousand different ways and like and super technically yeah, and, yeah. I, I, it, they didn't even really ask they were just like that's gonna know where you're not doing that i was like cool <laughs> okay <laughs> oh yo and uh jelly one you are super welcome and and thank you guys all for your awesome questions just a reminder to anybody who wants to submit one you can tag at deck art games in the chat and the mods will pull it over here for us and yes. uh, we've got one from cowboy carrot um who carrot. says um did you expect such a positive reaction uh that you've gotten from the lgbtq community um and uh something about uh what is the best part about such a positive piece of representation. You want to touch on that a little bit? Because I think that's a big part of, of this game here. Yeah, I mean, I honestly was so excited to be able to be a part of, a, first of all, I love Ellie. You know, like, I played that first game. We all fell in love with Ellie. Like, I, it was, it's very easy to play this role, like, because it was, she's so easy to love. I already went on this whole journey with her. Like, we were already in love, you know? Right. So to some extent, like, again like that's why i was saying it's so exciting to get to jump into a world that you already know it already lived rent free in my head you know so it's very easy to just be like oh i know where i need to be tonally because i know that performance like i know mm. how to um mm. so you know i was honored that they hired me and i was that excited that you know when you're passionate about something and you're excited about something you know you hope that that finds the right audience and that and you know, usually if you can care about something that much, there is a group of people who is gonna care about that too. And I'm glad that it was embraced by the LGBT community in the way that it has been. And um, I have, you know, I wish that it wasn't so rare. I'm glad I think that's a big that thing we're finding too. Yeah. That there's, yeah. you know, there's a handful of games that are out there that are a case of representation and they're like these these treasured gems uh, by a lot of gamers because they're so rare, you know, yeah. that it, 
But, but I think also something that's so one of the things that I loved so much about this game is that it's a huge AAA game that pushes, you know, the envelope and um, includes so many different types of people and different types of relationships that you just don't see in games like this. So I think that they, you, you, like, this, this game was a, um, broke a lot of the barriers and I hope that a lot of other game companies will, will take a note from that and start to, to um, follow suit because it's you know we it's a representation of our of our world we have all different types of people we don't just have white guys you know yeah so. and I was, what one i was under, hold on hold on wait wait a second wait i thought all video games were for 15 year old boys white cisgender middle class middle america boys yeah you guys are telling me that there's other people in the world totally correct no that's okay. okay brian but okay. i do i think that one of the other things that halo really one loved that i was nervous about when we started you know before we started doing scenes which was it was never it was never an issue just to be fair but like you know a lot of times people they want to craft stories for other people but they also have an in inherent bias so there's a shoehorning of like hello we are gay have you noticed that we are gay and like that in <laughs> right, itself right, right, is right, the right. conflict like because it's a conflict for frankly the writers right and th this didn't have that at all like ellie and dina are in a relationship and they are the same sex but that's never the focus of it's, it's right. never an issue. They it right. never, I mean, there's like one old guy at the beginning. One and shitty like, guy yeah, in a bar. Shut up. Which there's like, always one shitty course, guy in a bar. Exactly. Of course, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's, but it's the same as like, you could be a straight couple and somebody would be like, you little harlots, you know, like whatever. Like <laughs> it's just gonna be, and I like that about this game that like, that is the relief for me because like, I think subliminally what it does teach young queer kids when they see queer storylines where it is an issue is that it's inherently not normal, right? That's what they teach them by like making an issue out of the story instead of just letting the story exist like any other normal story. Right. Does that make sense? Of yeah, course, that, yeah. it, that, that it doesn't become the defining uh, thing. I mean, you know, we're, we're speaking uh, spoiler warning here uh, if you're dipping back in. Um, but, uh, you know, for instance, one of my favorite characters in the whole game is Lev. Yeah. And the thing that I love about Lev, and we know, of course, their, you know, personal story in, in game and how there's struggle there that we can get into. But the, the thing that I take away from Lev is that Lev is a warrior, but also merciful. Mm -hmm. And like, to me, that was like, like such a profound moment like in this whole like that the, the person who starts to break this cycle of revenge and grief that we're talking about is Lev like yeah. Lev teaches Abby in in a, in a look yeah and like and and to have so much violence I know but to have so much <laughs> violence perpetrated against you and against people like you yeah. and to still be compassionate and to still have empathy like to me that makes Lev the hero of this game for me yeah and I mean it's the thing is is that there are a lot of there are so many ways to look at the story and and lev is an incredible character and you know maybe easily the most likable and um yeah it's i i just i love that they stories can stand on their own without it having to be heavy-handed or shoehorned in in ways and you know because i i see that all the time i see it in scripts i read i see it in stuff i've done you know and I try to be like, hey, do I have to say this? And like, can I just call her babe? Because that's what we would do. Can we start doing things that are normal instead of it being, you know, and have it not be an issue that I call her babe? Or like, it, like lots right. of things that were, never had to be conversations. It was like little things that normalize things in a way where it's like, no, this relationship is real. It's in hmm. it, these relationships are real. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, it was exciting. I wish it wasn't so rare, but I also, wish more stories about queer people were like this you know it'd be great if they yeah. didn't have to be tragic you know but right well shout out <laughs> to everybody at naughty dog and the writers and of course yeah. neil and everybody and that worked on this game with you i mean it it's uh, all them i didn't write anything <laughs> <laughs> well you know uh but i mean the, there, there's a synergy that's happening there, you know? Like, even, like, a little bit of a line change. Or, I mean, do you have a favorite line? Is there any is there any moment in the script that stuck out to you when it was on paper that you were like, this is what's, this is what it's about for me? Oh, I mean, I love the trailer. That was the first thing we shot was the the, the trailer scene. Um, I love the, like, I think should be, people should be terrified of you. Like, it's so good. Like, that line is so good. I think, like, you know, Neil and Hallie did such a good job with that and, like, just the, du I love duality, the duality of seeing 
Ellie absolutely terrified in a, at a dance, like because she's exposed and with this girl and she feels vulnerable and then just brutally murdering people and not being terrified is like, right. you know, that, <laughs> right. is, that is just like peak Ellie. And it, it, that is what this game is for, for her journey. And, you know, I think that that I loved that, but a lot of the scenes we did, you know, because we have the ability to do them like, you know, 40 times, they move and change. You know, if I'm like, I don't like this, and you'll be like, say this instead. Don't tell her. You say, mm -hmm. you do this. And then like, I'll be like, I want to do this. And then sometimes I would just like add something in. And honestly, we'd be doing it for so long that Neil and Hallie and I have talked about it a lot the last few months because people are like, which lines did you write? I'm like, a lot of them, but I don't even know. Like, I can't sure. remember. And Neil will just be like, I'm looking at the pages that we started shooting that scene with. And I can tell you that almost no lines are the same. So <laughs> who knows who did what? And like, you know, and that's a combination of him, Hallie, me, Ashley, and just like how like physicality starts to change things and you find more nuance in it and like, you know. That's a beautiful that's collaborative so cool. thing yeah. that's going on. I mean, so so you you dig performance capture. You do it again sometime? Oh yeah. I mean, I love it. I think I think I, I think it's really cool. I mean, just like the idea of like not of it not being me. I love people not like touching my face all the time. I mean, they're still fixing my dots sometimes. Right. It's just a very, it's, it's, there's just so much less vanity in it, I think, yeah. for me at least. Um, I'm never like, oh, did I look weird? Was that a weird angle? I'm just like, yeah. They'll, it's like everybody looks super they'll weird they'll yeah, from every angle. Later, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this question came from uh, a couple different people, so it's hard to okay. credit it to them. But uh, let, let's say uh, another game company reaches out to you and says they'd love for you to be in their game. Is there is there a video game world or franchise or story that you would just like, you know, since we're in the business of mentioning OG, oh, we'd like to be in that game. Let's let's start it now. What can we manifest? Are you gonna play in the future? I mean, I heard they're making a new Bioshock game. I mean, I would die. Okay. Um, but wink, I don't wink. Know Anybody if that's tuning true. in? But I mean, there's so many amazing people making games now, and like amazing directors making games. Like you know, like I love like Horizon Zero Dawn, and like I love the God of War series, and like yeah, I mean, there's there's so many different. What about you guys? What do you guys want to be in? Ooh. I've been saying the same thing for a long time, just trying to hope it'll happen, but I would love anything Star Wars related. Oh, yeah, would... Star Wars. Are you kidding? I feel like it's, to me, that feels so, like, I can't even say it. I know, but there were that a bunch of people amazing. that were like, when, when when Star Wars was sold to Disney and mm. there was this, oh, no, now they're going to Disneyfy it. I was so stoked. I was on the opposite side of the spectrum yeah. where I'm like, this means we're going to get Disney making Star Wars forever. Yeah, <laughs> like the, the chance true. of us being in a Star Wars thing true. just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. I mean, so I just feel like Star Wars always breaks my heart. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah it's it's the best. Star Wars is the best. That's the peak. It's a great, that's a great choice. <laughs> what about I would, you? I would love to get to play in some like ultimate fantasy game where I could be like a druid or a sorceress or something with like magical, fantastical powers. Oh, you'd be that amazing be really at that. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Look at the passion my for it. Ultimate. <laughs> Manifesting. <be> awesome. <laughs> uh, not, not to just call out a nerd like this, but uh, you seem like a nerd. Do you play any D&D? &D? What's going on? Well, I've, I'm glad you asked. Well, I've, I've actually been playing on the weekends on uh, Gary Witta and Cypher's channel. She's been teaching us She's been DMing and teaching us D&D, uh, &D, but in Animal Crossing. So it's called Dungeon Crossing. <laughs> oh, that's and so yeah. nice. And it's Sundays oh at God. 10 a.m. Pacific on Gary Witta and Cypher's channel. But, sweet, and then, sweet. Who, he wrote Rogue One, did he not? Yeah, he wrote w Rogue One and uh, and Book of Eli. Right. And um, and he's had this show, Animal Talking, that he's been doing on, on Twitch, which is awesome. Um, I think they're taking a little break. Now they have Talk Guys, um, where they, they do uh -huh. a talk show and Fall Guys, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, so I, we've been learning there and then I've also been playing in like a private game with friends, uh, over zoom, which has been fun. And yeah, I've, I've finally gotten into it. It's That's really awesome. just took zoom to be able to be like, guys, please, please include yeah. me. You know, I, I gotta say, we've been staying in touch with some friends that we've been, uh, like 
we've had this technology, but yeah. now that everybody's like locked at home, we're talking to our friends abroad much more, our friends on the other side of the country much more. And you can play, I, I everybody's shouting out there, mm. Barbarian, Barb. Mm. What, what do you guys? Oh yeah, so yeah, Barb the Barbarian. Yeah, that's, that's uh-huh. my character, Barb the Dwarf <laughs> Barbarian. That's adorable. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yes. She loves to rage. She loves to rage? Yeah. That's it. She loves to rage. Yep. Come on through, guys, tomorrow. I've been a woman up of early simple on taste. Saturdays to do this. So come through. Uh, okay, that's exciting. We're going to yes. have to tune into that because, I mean, we got a lot of people that are interested. I think a lot of people that would love to play a game of D&D. And you guys get on a get on an online campaign. Like, now's a chance. You For can sure. You can be that barbarian in your living room. It's you know? so much fun. The mm-hmm. character sheet websites and stuff are great. Like, D&D Beyond has been really easy to use. There's another one that I've been using in the private game that's really good. And, yeah, you can. it's all, like, integrated there for you, which is awesome. That is awesome. If if uh, Dina was a, a D and D character, uh, if you're gonna build a D and D character for Dina, what race and uh, class do you think she'd play as? Honestly, I don't know enough about all the races and classes. I feel like to do this right, I only okay, I only fair. play like a like a dwarf barbarian, and then in my other game, I'm a I'm a, a I'm a cleric wood elf. Ooh, that's a va- that one has some vampire stuff, so I had to go cleric. Oh, nice. So I'm like, those are the only two kinds of things I understand really so far. Hmm. I'm thinking about what Dina would do. Yeah, you tell me. Hmm. Hmm. What are you thinking? Maybe. Maybe a human. Yeah. I could Because they could do a little bit of everything, Mm -hmm. you know? Hmm. Or, uh,. She's good. We'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Amelia is actually, uh, this is a little bit, not quite a spoiler, but like a little teaser for you guys. Amelia is going to be, uh, you want to tell me? You tell Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be DMing my very first game, um, which is exciting. Because uh, I've, uh, I've played Dungeons and Dragons, but I've never been the one behind the helm. But that's about to change. And uh, we're going to be doing a little mini one-off thing with some really cool, Cool friends, so that's yeah. awesome. So maybe maybe we can D and D together someday, Shannon. I'd love we it. Can... Are you guys gonna stream that? We're going to uh, not. We're not gonna stream it. We're going to record it and then we're going to put it up on YouTube. Cool. Yeah, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to push the envelope technically a little bit. Uh, Shannon and I were talking right before the stream started about how we both have the same uh, tendency to be like, oh, let's overcomplicate this right before we go live. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, and so for this, we're trying to like do the opposite and, and be like, okay, let's just get everything controlled and record it. And then we'll be able to share it with people. It's a lot easier to play when you're not also worried about your inputs and all that stuff. Maybe a dragonborn. What's <gasps> that? That might be who Dina is. What's what's a dragonborn? Tell me about a, it. A dragonborn is half dragon, half human. So they have some like depending on who their dragon, like what 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 kind of dragon they're descendants from they could be like emotional but also really strong and or just like super cutthroat um but they are um i mean they're really cool i I played a a dragonborn um yeah just very powerful that sounds awesome okay dragonborn that's my answer. <laughs> well, I figured it out. <laughs> well, uh, another problem solved. <laughs> uh, so this is a this is a spoiler question about the end. Uh, from this is from Cortex Efem Kid forty seven, who asks, mm-hmm. um, "Do you think there's a chance of spoiler again? Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Do you think there's a chance of Ellie going back to Dina in the end? Do you think there's any chance for redemption in your?" In your head, Canon. I mean, I don't know. One of the most interesting things about how Neil sees story is, you know, he'll even like a, another actor in the thing will say what they think something means in the story, and he'll be like, "That's a really interesting interpretation." Like there isn't mm. a wrong answer. Like he's like, you know, far be it from me until I explicitly say something, then. Who knows what will happen? You know, I think like right, and and so I think there is an open ending in that, in terms of like, you know, Dina obviously went back to Jackson probably to be with Jesse's mother, 
to have yeah. help with the baby because the the letters kind of talked a lot about that. I mean, it's not explicitly said, but you know that that makes sense that that's where she'd mm. go, and you know left took everything and just left the guitar because it was the only it was what was that was what was driving ellie and um i don't know Mm. how ellie feels about it you know or how much shame she feels about it or how angry dina is or how sad or how protective she is now like i don't know because i don't know that if there's a right or wrong answer and you know she does have a child so it, it, it changes the stakes and i mean I, I want to know too, but I think the thing, the way it is now is that there isn't an answer, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it could change. I, I just don't know yeah. wherever there's gap there. And there's such a big gap there, you know, like I have no idea how long it took her to get to Santa Barbara a and long then time. back, like how long it's been. Like it could have been right, right. nine months. I have no, or it could have been a year. I mean, she loses a lot of weight by the time she gets down there. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, that's an incredible thing because we got like Seattle day one, Seattle day two, and like so much is happening yeah. inside of these couple of days. And then also Years in pass. the, yeah. I know somebody was saying something on Twitter. I don't remember. And I realized how people, some people don't realize how much time passes, right? Like Dina's just late at the end of the Seattle days, right? She just realizes she's pregnant, like while they leave. So that means she's only been pregnant for, maybe three weeks a month maybe she's newly 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 pregnant um it's like they broke up she got pregnant and didn't know and start started dating ellie always wanted to be with ellie and then is pregnant so then then you have like her just morning sick that whole time but she's still barely even showing and then the next time you see them the baby is i mean he looks like six months old so you got like nine or ten months then plus like six months of the baby so I mean, it's almost a year and a half, maybe a little under that, Hmm. goes by before she then is like, I can't stop thinking about this. Right. And and that Days of Heaven house that they're in up there, I mean, like, that is... That's like my uh, apocalypse dream state. You know, it's like if, if things get bad enough, where is that like house on the hill? So to I speak, have that, that print you're... above my bed. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. It's such a beautiful, beautiful place. And it is. Like, it, I... You know, I guess that that asks the question. It's like, what in our what in our life is so beautiful that we're taking for granted to focus on mm. the things that make us upset? Mm-hmm. You know, we're surrounded by these things. One thing we changed our, halfway through the playthrough of this game, uh, we were so just like, honestly, I was uh, not good at killing dogs. Uh, really not that good at stealth in general. And I was just dying and the, everybody in the game was dying and I was just getting beat down. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, yeah. I don't know if I can physically make it through this game. And one thing we made an adjustment, we got a lot of feedback from our moderators. Uh, we're like, why don't you guys just take a breather more often? And we call, we changed it into uh, happy breaks where we get good news updates from everybody on the stream or we say something that we're grateful for. And like just checking in with stuff that's happening in our real life, like somebody got their license or somebody just got oh, into school nice. or whatever. And, and that like checking in with those things that we're grateful th- th- for became kind of like our um, survival tactic mm-hmm. for a game as intense as this is. And I think that ultimately we're trying to like copy and paste that into our real life a little bit more it's like when i get really stressed out or freaking out about real life real world things it's like okay but what is working like what what is okay Mm -hmm. and that can kind of help recalibrate us to to the most upset stuff yeah i mean a lot of the game really except except for the beginning you know really it, it lies in this like very tense place you know because it's about grief that i joke about it like on my stream people will be like do dina voice i'm like guys it just is my voice i'm just never that concerned with you <laughs> you know like <laughs> it goes down an octave when you're like you can't do that you know <laughs> all right. of a sudden yeah, everything yeah. just kind of gets serious and i was like oh that's interesting because like i didn't think about it. it's not a different voice it just i don't usually uh, stream with that kind of intensity <laughs> yeah. right you're not under mm. that world yeah but everyone is in that zone so like i mean just emotionally but even just that subconsciously will stress you the hell out <laughs> Right. Yes, I see the Dina voice, the, the Dina. voice of Dina. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. 
Uh, well, yo, uh, Shannon, I'm totally digging hanging out with you. I, I've just observed out of the corner of my eye that we have blown past our one hour mark of uh, of <laughs> hydration. a hydration break. Would you Would you like a, a a five minute breather? We usually take a five minute break, and we could, if you're down to kick it, come back and we can hang out or do something stupid like play Fall Guys or that works for me, guys. Hydration check. Let's do it. Let's get some hydration check. We have We're going to take five minutes to get some. Put them up. The hydration check. Oh, there they are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got a two-part emo. See, they, nice. th- my, my community makes their own emotes. They were like, can we have a hydration check emote? I was like, "You abs- of course. Whatever hydration you want. check. It's important. All right. Well, let, let's do it. Uh, and we'll be right back with you guys in five short minutes. Thanks again to all of you who are here. I see Los Ninos back for two whole years wow. now. Uh, Michaela Wood for four months. We appreciate you guys joining us. And uh, Shannon, of course, thanks for being here. Thanks for having uh, me. We'll see you guys on the other side of five minutes. And in the meantime, check out exclamation point Shannon or guest in the chat. You can find her on Twitter, Instagram, and make sure you're following her on Twitch because she's playing Bioshock and Life is Strange right now. And you guys love those games and keep asking me to play them again. So let's <laughs> Let's go to Shannon's. All right. We'll see you guys in five minutes. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Good to see you guys. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, we have a very special guest on today's stream, Shannon Woodward, who plays Dina in The Last of Us Part Two. Yes. And uh, we're just hanging out and chatting. And she's still down to kick it and hang out with us. So if you guys have any questions, you can tag at Deckard Games in the chat. And uh, we are figuring out technically if it will be possible for us to play a little game or two together with us. And um, also, Amelia, you want to tell people what you're up to tomorrow? Oh, yes. Tomorrow we begin Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which I'm very excited about. I will be playing. And uh, we also have a really awesome prize to give away. Uh, we have a Blue Yeti microphone that we want to hook one of you all up with. Yes, so. we are powered by Blue. We use a Blue Yeti for our streams right here, and we're really excited to be able to share it with some of you guys who maybe could use it for your uh, Zoom class or for your streaming if you're a streamer too. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we continue on Sunday. We're playing Ghost of Tsushima, which is my new favorite game. And yes. if you guys uh, don't join me on Sunday, I'm going to play the whole game, and you can't stop me. And I'm just honestly, guys, I'm delaying playing this. I would I would be playing this game right now, but he I have would. to wait until he Sunday would, yeah. because of, yeah, 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 you get it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a cycle. Much love. And thank you, everybody, who's retweeting. And, uh, whoa, we got uh, Isaac Zloys back for two whole years. Wow. Appreciate you guys. All of our gift sub givers, you are super awesome. You're getting 10 times entry into our prize giveaway. Uh, we've got our, uh, there it is, our Play the Positive pin. And Amelia and I signed these thank you postcards to say thank you for joining us on stream. All our subscribers get five times entry. And all you got to do is be here with us when we pull a winner. We'll pull a winner uh, at the next hydration break, which yes. is in like 40 minutes or so. And um, uh, good to go. Let's see. Um, we're going to dial back in with Shannon here. Uh, hang tight, er, buddy. Shannon, we're coming your way in three, two, two one, one, seven. Ten, nine, eight. Fire Crystal, thank you for the gift subs. There we go. Hey. Hey. I'm just coming uh, at you live uh, still from the Halloween aisle at Home Depot. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, it's looking quite... Uh, Quite exciting over there. Thank yeah, you. I love the terrifying little uh, skeleton girls just over your right shoulder. Yeah. Whatever, which side is it? What's going on? One? They're they're kind of up there. They look like they're nine ninety nine. Maybe you could take two of them off the shelf for me. Uh, you know what? They're a little bit fixed. Uh, but if you give me the PO box, we'll just we'll go ahead and send them on your way. That'd be great. Oh, yes, Thank excellent, you. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so I'm taking you like Halloween. I mean, I love spooky stuff aesthetically. I think it's fun. I also really am not like a horror movie person, which is funny. But I, I like, I like the aesthetic. I there's something joyful about being like, "Yay, we're scared!" That I think I just connect with. I'm like, "Me too." <laughs> <laughs> it's something kind of adorable about it. Well, that, that's that's brave, you know. I I'm just scared, <laughs> so I I run away. That's what I do. I'm like run away, hi. A valid strategy. I mean, ask any gamer. Yo, uh, Twitch loves to recommend a scary game because mm-hmm. I think people love the reactions. They love. I mean, when we were playing The Last of Us uh, Part One, like I think that I was I, I was like it was a year 
earlier, so I was like extra insecure about not being good enough at video games. And so I'm like, in my mind, I'm hearing like, you're terrible, you're doing you're doing a terrible job. This is never gonna work. Nobody's and then and then all ah! you know, yeah. uh, that compound of frenetic energy, like are you, you're, you're playing Bioshock, uh, and are you gonna stream some other uh, like horror games Halloween time, or what's yeah, your plan for October? Before we played Bioshock, we played Resident Evil 2, the remake, which was mostly just me clowning on Claire, and then being like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Um, but um, it, yeah, that was fun. I, I'm not sure what we're gonna play after Bioshock. I think we'll probably go back and uh, let people suggest stuff and vote. So I think that's kind of what I've been doing is like letting people make suggestions. And then the ones that I see a lot, I'm like, all right, we're going to choose between these four games. And then okay. usually smart. it ends up being like two of them kind of converging at least so mm -hmm. far. So, so yeah, we'll, we we'll just kind of see what happens. I, I, I would like to do more spooky games. I, 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 I wish I'm excited for Animal Crossing also to have like lots of fun, spooky stuff, which I feel yeah, they're like- Yeah, doing a crossover with Dead by Daylight. Did you hear about that? No, what? they are. <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> oh my God. So, I totally like, believe you. Anything could happen. I was playing the other day and one of my villagers came up to me and goes, and I did not suggest this. The villager just goes, oh, uh, uh, every, I noticed people here have been calling you vote early. Do you want me to call you that too? And I was like, this is genius. Genius. <laughs> um, but smart. there's innovative ways they do. If you, if you told me that that was, I'd be like, yeah, that adds up. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. uh, you know, I people have recommended for us the uh, Resident Evil 2 remake. That's what that we, is yeah. actually of all the games that have been recommended for us, the one that has the most recommends, and we just keep going for number two <laughs> because we are on a okay. scale of one to ten, ten being you. you terrified at a sleepover and you never you know you can't get over it for like a year and one being like oh well, that was kind of spooky where do you where do you put resident evil 2 remake i'd say it's like a seven okay we could probably okay so but but last of us part one where is last of us part one i think that gets more like an eight and the last of arts part two i think is is scarier than that Okay, so you think that if we could handle Last of Us Part 1 and 2, we should be okay in Resident Evil? I, I do. I think that, like, you know, there's a character that's, that, that is pretty ominous, and he is scary, and it does stress you out. But there's also, like, then you have, like, Claire, the lead character running around being like, oh, sorry, are you okay? And like, there's something about it that like, even though I get scared, there's a duality of like, you, you collect weeds to like do your health. And I'm just like, Claire's just like a weed head. Like none of this is even <laughs> real. She's just running around being like, do you have any weed? Um, so like, oh, I swear I can stop with the weed yeah. anytime, man. And so like, it's entertaining. And like, it's just enough, like it gets silly enough with some of the dialogue that Okay. You kind of like, I, I feel like comforted again before I'm scared again. And I mean, it is scary and there's a lot of jump scares and, but it's, it's fun. The game's really good. I really enjoyed playing it. And there's two halves of it. I, I didn't play the second half, which is the male lead. I, but I want to play it. Like now I, I was like, I feel like I shouldn't, because there's a lot of similarities, I think between the sides, but I'm probably right. that, like, I want to play it on my own time because I like the game enough. And I'd finally just gotten decent at it. <laughs> well, you, you've made us feel at least twice as brave as we were yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. We, we've, we've decided we're going to do it on Halloween. We're going to do, like, a, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people are bummed that they can't go celebrate yeah. in a more traditional way, Go, you know, go out. And uh, so what we're going to do is play Resident Evil 2 with no guarantee that we will complete this game. <laughs> and we're going to play it as long as we possibly can until we just get too scared and stop. So That's it's gonna fair. be like a a one stream go. It could be an hour stream. It could be we're gonna a ten take hours bets to see how long people think we can make <laughs> That's it. Funny. Yeah, how far do you guys think we would make it into uh, into Resident Evil Two, the remake? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, we played a game called Until Dawn, which I think you would probably really like because it's also a choice-based game and it's scary. So I feel like the two would go really well together. Yeah, for people your have stream. suggested that one. That one sounds really fun too. Um, yeah. What was the other one that I, I, I really want to play the Alien game. 
Oh, oh, isolation. Yeah, I really want to play that, though. I hear you have to wait in closets and stuff a lot, and I was worried that maybe people wouldn't enjoy watching it, but I felt like maybe that would be a fun Halloween game to play. I you, Yeah, I mean, closets... Go for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I don't know. There's a... There's a there's, yeah, I, Outlast, people talk about that a lot until Dawn. I, I yeah. saw somebody, one of, one of our uh, community talking amongst themselves on Twitter said like I really want to watch Brian and Amelia play Alien Isolation but I also know it would like scar them for life so <laughs> I'm not going to recommend it and yeah. so like now I just know that category like we got to work our way up to some of these games some some people think we would make it for 10 minutes tops <laughs> and some people think we could do the whole game so yeah, I, I guess we'll have to find out I do is it like a like an 8 hour game like is it it's 8 hours 10 hours I think I, I did five or six streams that were three hours each for the first half for the first character narrative and then there's a second narrative right mm. so we better start early i'd say it's like we, 10 that's or be 11 like a... hours it's also right. like there's a lot of like puzzle stuff in it you know so like you have to like move around the map and look at the maps a lot and stuff so it depends on like you might be way better at that than i am i was like a lot. Or way like, worse yeah. <laughs> i was like asking the chat i'm like tell me where i'm supposed to go i like somebody look it up they're like you need to go back to this office i'm like thank you like don't make me die a million times wandering around in front of you people. yeah it is it is nice to play with a bunch of experts right there with you it's true. we'll call yeah. out sometimes if we get really stuck you know we call mm -hmm. it giving us a pro tip like yeah. uh it's not a spoiler or backseat gaming if you put pro tip you have a gun yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, like, oh, by the way right. i love it i love it i I'm I'm happy for the backseat gaming if it's not something I thought of. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm like great, perfect. I love help. Me too. Me too. Uh, do you want to ask this one from uh, I was a? Oh yeah. Um, so here's a question. It says that Ellie plays the guitar. Do you play any instruments? And what musical style tickles your fancy the most? Oh, um, yeah. No, I I grew up playing in an orchestra. Uh, I played viola as a kid for a long time and then when I was 16 I uh I stopped playing in the orchestra and I started playing guitar so I've been playing guitar my whole life um oh, wow yeah um I mean I'm I should be better than I am for as long as I've been playing it but I'm pretty decent at it um and you know I I really do like a, all kinds of music to some extent um mm -hmm. I'm kind of all over the map though I will say I've been listening to a lot less music this year because I kind of can't handle it. Like music makes me emotional. Me too. Um, and I feel like I've been listening to a lot more podcasts than I have been records. Cause I just, sometimes it's nice, but I'm like, you know what? I just need to, to like hear something fun and stuff. But otherwise anything that I usually would like really sink my teeth into is kind of like sad. And I'm like, maybe we're not going to push mm. it. Let's not push yeah. it. It's smart yeah. to take care of yourself that way, though. I mean, what do you have any any pro tips for anybody who's like struggling with this safer at home, more isolated lifestyle kind of thing? Like, what are you doing to combat that? I mean, well, I, I, streaming honestly has been really wonderful. Like, this has been such a social experience, um, you know, and and such a positive experience, you know, for the most part. That I I, I think like that's been a real outlet for me, but one of the bigger things is just like making a schedule for myself, you know, and knowing what I'm going to do every day. Exercising is helpful though. Like it's an apocalypse outside. So maybe just do some sit-ups in your living room for now, if you're on the West coast of any kind, Right. but the schedule helped and like just having a routine, like, you know, now like it hits 7 PM and I'm like, Oh, I turn on NPR and uh, I cook. That's, that's what I do, you know, and you cook for a couple hours and then, watch a movie, watch TV, play some Animal Crossing, have some wine, go to sleep, wake up, exercise, make some breakfast, make some coffee, walk the dogs, like do some work, take a break, make lunch, you know, like, and the time just starts to really move. Hmm. And that, that weirdly has helped. If anything, it's given me perspective on like how fast time was going before and I just wasn't really noticing because we were so busy all the time. Yeah. yeah. That now time is just like dust. It's like, what's two months? It'll be a blink of an eye. <laughs> right, I mean, right. That's right, only yeah. sixty dinners, you know? <laughs> I've made hundreds now. <laughs> what oh. kind of things are you cooking? Oh man. I have a couple of go to's that are like staples. Um the Allison Roman chickpea uh coconut stew. It, it's amazing. It's on Ooh. the New York Times website. It's like turmeric and like 
it's basically chickpeas and kale and coconut mm. milk just like really boiled down but it's like it's vegan it's delicious it's fun to make that i make a lot there's i've also gotten like really back into like all the cookbooks i have and just started like diving in i learned how to make like really good chicken pie tan which has been really mm. delicious i don't know what about you guys have you guys been cooking a lot yes much more ever uh -huh. since uh, march i guess and what are you guys um, making we made sushi the other day we i just which... bought a sushi kit <gasps> blew my mind i was like i can't believe i made this in my kitchen because i'm a little obsessed with sushi yeah, like i could eat it every day Same. um so made the sushi rice got some crab and made california hand rolls which just blew my mind oh that's amazing um, it was so good that's, that's so awesome. good. And then also like uh, sag paneer, we've made some of that. Oh, that's my favorite, yeah. yeah. Love. I Love. make like a butter paneer, like butter chicken, but like with mm -hmm. the paneer. And like the Instapot yes. and the air fryer have been the saviors of quarantine for me. Air fryer? Oh my God, you guys, I'm about to change your life. Dina, is that you? <laughs> this is, this is, this is this secret talk. Guys. Okay, what's up? No one's listening. Wait, An air fryer? fryer? Just a thousand yeah. of our it's closest like friends. a hundred bucks. And it fries stuff, but without in without being in oil. So you like spray it with some Pam or something. Anything that's fried, like nuggets or egg rolls or I mean, I made I made uh, what's it called? Chicken parm in it. Like, and you just like you can put it like frozen tempura in there. You set it for seven minutes. It's restaurant quality. What? You know what I'm gonna do He's right gonna now? Order Shana. that. It's I'm literally going to... going to change your life. You're suddenly gonna be like, I'm gonna eat fried food all the time. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Is it healthier? Well, yeah, because there's less there's less oil. I mean, it's still breaded stuff if you're using breaded yeah. stuff, but like, there's, I mean, now it's changed. Like all the Trader Joe's frozen stuff. I'm like, you can make fries in it. I made fries out of a potato in the air fryer. Oh my gosh! Absolutely delicious. Yo, I mean, not that you're sponsored by an air fryer I'm company. I would never, I would never assume that. Uh, but is there a brand that you recommend, or do I you have? I don't know do you... which kind it is. I can go look. Do you want me to go it's, look? You, you can, you can DM me I'll later DM about later. it. Uh, but yeah, here I am. I'm, uh, yeah, my, my, I'm so, I'm so about this. That's probably the one. <laughs> this one that looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> Should we just turn this into a QVC <laughs> shopping stream? Like, <laughs> guys, like I wish someone would have told me buy this like six months before we bought it because it was just like it, it really it, the possibilities really grew when you were like, oh, we can have good fried food. It's not just gonna be like it tastes like falafel. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, we made some fryer. We've been making falafel. Yeah. Um, and tzatziki as well, so maybe oh, I got really into making baba ganoush. That's fun. Ooh. Everybody's feeling hungry in the but chat I'm right now. I'm telling you, the falafel is gonna be next level in the air fryer. Okay. God, I'm so excited. God bless you, Shannon Woodward. Yes. I knew there was a reason we aligned <laughs> I'm for <here> this. To help. <laughs> uh, so, what are Dina's feelings on fried food? <laughs> no, no, I, hold on, let me text Neil and Howie. <laughs> we need the expanded universe headcanon. I just I want to kind of circle back to something you mentioned though when we ask you about Dina after the world, right? And you and you mentioned it, I want to jump in on it, that people's expanded universe or headcanon or what they believe happened at the end of the story or even in between moments, to Neil's uh point that he made to you, it's it's like it's great that anybody has these ideas and these stories going on inside your head. And that's really what these game developers are doing, guys. They want to they want to give you a jumping off place. Say, here's all the toys you can play with and then just go to town. Like, and, and don't spend, if I can, because I know there's a lot of this uh, within the Detroit Become Human fandom. There's a lot of people that have very specific ideas about how the story unfolds and what happens after that. But there's like so many different endings that how can you possibly uh, worry about if somebody else's expanded universe is the same as yours? So I just want to like free you all right now from needing what happens after the story ends of The Last of Us Part Two. What you imagine happens, happens, and what happens after Detroit happens for you. You don't have to spend all your time in the comment section making sure that everyone else agrees with you because, uh, you it's know. It's your story. It's your story, well, it and, and that's really experience. what actors are doing. Because, like, especially, you know, 
I mean, you're, it's your experience with the game, you know? And depending on how you play the game, you're going to see more in-game stuff. And and if you miss something, it doesn't mean that you missed it. And it does, it just wasn't part of your experience, that playthrough. Right. And it, it also means you can have a totally different playthrough the next time you play. And, you know, again, like, to get back to what I was saying about, like, you know, elevating the novel, like, it, it becomes a part of you. And I think that's also why people are so... They want to argue about it so much because people really do have a true personal emotional experience and right. if it differs from someone else i think people feel like that experience is invalidated you yeah. know they feel right. like it's being taken from them and it's actually a testament to how well the game was made if you're having a visceral reaction to someone else's perspective or someone else's experience or you know someone negating your experience i mean it's because people did a good job making what they made, you know? And, and especially, like, there's also, like, people wanting characters to be real and wanting to, like, all of that is a manifestation of, you know, all of these devs and writers and, you know, the actors are included in that, like, really working for a long time to make a world for you to live in. And mm. it's really, like, it's wild to see. And it's really, it's the same with even, you know, movies and TV to some extent. There's always a death. You say, like... They say art is is born and dies a bunch of times as you're making mm. it, right? So there's like the script, it's born and then it dies as soon as you start giving it to other people because the bubble starts getting popped. And then, you know, you start shooting and all of a sudden the actors have have thoughts about characters and so it's it's being born again and it's like being reinterpreted and then, you know, there's this whole bubble period where it just exists to the people that make it and it means only what we decided that it and then you have to send it away and it kind of it's it's it dies to us and is reborn again with its own right. life for everyone else and like that's why i played the game before it came out because i was like i need to have my own experience before i just hear everybody else in my head and now i want to yeah. play it again you know and yeah. and see other people's perspectives in it but i got a shot to do it with only mine and that was fun that's that's an amazing thing. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. We we played through Detroit for the first time live on stream. Really? Uh, and I I knew only a third of the script. You know, right. each of the playable characters. They were really secretive about everything else. Right. So even working on the game, I was like, I don't know what happens at the end of it, really. Right. Um. You know, besides a few things, and uh, I saw Kai the guy mentioned in our chat here, and this is true. Did you know that The Last of Us Part Two? and Detroit Become Human are taking place in the same year. What? Oh, I didn't know that. They're taking place at the same time in the near future, like, in 2038. Huh. So oh. there are two very different uh, interpretations of what you know what would the world be i mean in the world of the last of us the last playstation to be released was was it the playstation 2 or playstation 3 uh i think we see a playstation 3 in in the world of because it came mm -hmm. out in 2013 and then in detroit become human you know you there must be like a playstation 9 yeah. by now well, you know? yeah. I, was just like, yeah. I was like i can't remember what year is westworld in? it's 2053 so westworld comes would come after yeah. the timeline of that yeah. So, I mean, guys, the future is in your hands. We could, where are we going to go here? Are we going to get... Whoa. Well, I hope it's more like Detroit and not like The Last of Us <laughs> because I don't want to die from a virus that turns people into fungi creatures. Yo, Same. but if we got to androids in time, the androids could be super effective in combating against the infected. That's true. Just or also, out you know, f finding a vaccine without having to kill Ellie. Perhaps. Yeah. One yeah. can dream. You guys, speaking of changing the future, I think this is a beautiful segue. Don't you, Shannon, into reminding people they can register to vote? Oh, yes, guys. And Google early voting in your state. Yeah, it's super easy. Yes. We're really excited to be voters in this upcoming election. And if mm -hmm. you're uh, over the age of 18 and live in the States, make sure you're registered to vote. There's uh, Twitch voters. There it is. The link is flowing through the chat, exclamation point, vote. And uh, Shannon, you're, you're registered to vote, are you not? Oh, yeah. I love to vote. We love to vote, we too. Love to I vote. can't <laughs> wait to vote. Early voting in California, I think, starts, it starts, the, I think, October 19th. That's yeah. right. So yeah. I am going to vote on October 19th. Me Excellent. too. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, if you guys like uh, choice-based games where your decisions matter and you influence the world around you, try the real choice-based game called Voting. You're gonna love voting. <laughs> You're gonna love oh voting. Oh my god! It's if you so... like choice-based games, you are gonna love voting. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah, so, are there any games that you're playing right now that are super, um, you know, like 
opposite of Detroit Become Human, Last of Us Part Two, where your whole world stakes, you know, like Bioshock and yeah, no, I don't Life is so. Strange too. <laughs> but I mean, uh, y- you play a little Fall Guys from time to time, oh. don't you? Oh yeah, I mess with Fall Guys. Uh, Shannon, uh, not that that was like a really indirect loop back to me just saying like, do, do you want to play some Fall Guys Let's with me and my wife? I think we should play Fall Guys. Let's do it. Let's get into what it. What do you guys think? Uh, is everybody on the stream down for us playing a little bit of Fall Guys? We'll, we'll maybe play uh, for a little bit until the top of the next hour. And then I know, Shannon, you've got a stream later today you'll have to prepare for. But uh, you guys are... You yes! want it? All right, so, so, so much hype. So we're going to we're gonna set this up. And uh, Shannon, we have a, um, a party uh, set up for us. Great. Um, I think we're still both in that lobby, aren't we? Probably. Do you want to come to our party? <laughs> Do you want to come to our party? We heard you're a child actress and no one's inviting you to birthday yes, parties. Can I Would you like to your birthday party? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the chat is asking, have you won a crown yet? And this is it, right? No. This is where you're going to win is, your this crown. This is going to be it. This is, this is where we're going to do it. I actually haven't played in a while. Hold on. It's actually telling me that it disconnected some from the network. Let me. No worries. I'm going to move a couple things around on our screen here, you guys. So we're going to, um, Shannon, I'm going to dip away just to pull the game up, and then I'll, I'll bring you back in here in a second once we get it going. Cool? Cool. Sounds good. All right. Sweet. All right, guys. Uh, here we go. I got to reposition a Ghost of Tsushima, by the way. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's what we're playing on Sunday. We're going to play a little Fall Guys, and uh, I'm going to move a couple things around on my screen to make sure that we can do it. And uh, Shannon, do you want to... Um, do you want to go live and we can squad stream it and then people can go back and forth or is that one step too many? Well, I feel like if I go live, then uh, my camera the multi-camera will thing. on the Zoom. It's possible. Because it only you... let, it'll only, like, maybe you'll still be able to hear me, but you won't be able to see me. Mm. All right, well, we got a nice face, so we're going to keep you around. Yes. Yeah, why don't we do uh, that and I'm just going to host it. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Uh, I should have been hosting this the whole time, but I forgot because I. I feel like your whole crew is here, man. They They're, are. They're hanging out. They with are, us. and I wanted them to hang here, so that's good. All right. So we're gonna dial this up. Amelia, do you want to be the first? Uh, yeah. The fo- first guy to fall. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do my job. Okay. So we have uh, developed a character for our, for our fall guy character, who we've dubbed the Lastodon. Oh. Um, he is the last Mastodon, <laughs> and uh, he's got some really cool outfits. So uh, he's trying to save his his entire species. The Lastodon is um, uh, literally the last Mastodon. His friends are Rebecca the Brilliant. Thank you for the gift subs. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. Um, and here we go. Uh, he he hasn't succeeded yet. <laughs> no, the last the Lastodon is having a rough go of it. Um, my PlayStation went to sleep, so I'm going to have to rejoin that party invite yeah, that you sent. Um, Do you want to invite hey. me in the game? Yeah, let's give it a go. This is yeah. so exciting. It is exciting. We've, we've never, we've never, uh, like, here we go, start. Where's Shannon? Invite. Will you Confirm. Be our friend? Come to our party. <laughs> All right, I sent you a game invite. And I'm going to need a couple of minutes just to uh, load your camera back up so that I don't accidentally reveal all of my personal information Great. as I have been known to do on accident. Yeah. All right. What's this? The Last of Dawn sounds like a good fantasy name. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I have to agree. Oh, I look kind of tan. We look kind of tan when you oh. turn all the lights off. <laughs> How unusual. <laughs> um, Amelia, can yeah. you run and turn the AC on in this room while I finish doing what I'm doing yes. here so that we can have Shannon up with this too. For some reason, it still is not showing. Can I invite you? Is that okay? Yeah, you invite me and then I'll okay. I'll try again. I gotta go back into my privacy settings. Maybe that's the problem. Thank you guys for hanging out. Yeah, it is, it is super hot here in California and uh, if you don't believe climate change is real, you're an absolute moron because... The it's planet is on fire, and it's getting worse every year. Yeah, there's some crazy for uh, wildfires going on here on the West Coast, like crazy apocalyptic type thing. Yeah. I got an invitation. Yes. <laughs> there you are. Okay, cool. So, now we've got... Oh, you, you're a nice little bird. Oh, I'm hello. just a little birdie. 
You're a I nice bird. To, I have to change my outfit. Amelia's gonna change her outfit. Oh, although we did get an egg. Uh, we are egg. We are egg. I have to um, wear my costume. There you go. And there you go. Lasted on. Lasted on egg? No, oh, that's weird. Lasted on combo. We're going to call this video Shannon. Because every, everybody's really nervous. They can't see you right now, Shannon. We're going to get you back. Don't you worry. I'm still here. She's still here. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. There he is. Our little dude. There he is, gorgeous boy. Stunner. Yes. <laughs> okay, and then. So I'm curious, where is everybody tuning in from uh, right now? Yeah, where, where, where in the are world you in are the you? World? We are in Southern California. What about you? We got to resize ourselves because there's going to be three of us. Mm -hmm. Somebody goes with that Dina Germany, voice. Germany, Switzerland. No, that's more Scotland, like this. <laughs> Belgium, New Zealand. Brazil, Argentina, Spain, Canada, London, Italy, Australia, Norway, Mexico, Guatemala, wow. Slovenia, Ukraine, San Francisco, Ontario, Seattle, Manila, Portugal, Chile, Poland, Lithuania, Africa, Kansas City, Manila, Dubai, Lebanon, Belarus, Wow. Wow. <laughs> Russia, Venezuela, oh Texas, gosh, Utah, incredible. Iran, Minnesota. <laughs> All my whole family's from there. Really? All for cute. Yeah. Wow. All right, there we go. Now we have we have a I feel like we literally have people from every single country. All right, Shannon, you're uh you're you're back. Uh say say one thing and we'll make sure we can hear it. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let's All right. Ride. Jump in, X to be ready, Amelia Rose. We're ready for it. I'm ready. All right. Here it is for the first time ever. How exciting. The Lasted On and the Pigeon are in it together. <laughs> I can't hear it, so I have to sing the music. <laughs> you know what's wild is the bass line. The <laughs> I just imagine like animal just being like finally. I know it, it reminds me of the opening of Seinfeld every time it's like That's uh, great. when you play Whirly Gig. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a favorite level, Shannon? Um, I have I, I have more I have least favorite levels than I have favorite levels. It's my favorite level if I beat it. It's my least favorite <laughs> level if it's tail chasing. If it's uh, Hate the tail chasing, general jumping, just like jumping over things. I don't, I really, I also don't like the spinny thing where you have to stay on the horizon line. Yeah, that one stresses me out too. I hear we're gonna get some new levels of this game coming uh, the top of the month. <gasps> I'm so excited. Incredible news. Incredible news. All right, Godspeed challenge. Good luck. First and second place, you guys. Where are you? <laughs> I can't wait. For them to make like private servers too. I heard that's I a thing. Uh, I joined their Discord and they they are very receptive to feedback and a lot of streamers are asking for that. So oh, because it would be amazing. Community. Imagine just playing with like fifty other streamers. I know. It would be so <laughs> fun. Be so cool. And playing with subscribers and like it'd be so fun. We need we need the uh, Twitch rivals of Fall Guys. I think there will be some some big prize someday. It would be. Oh, oh, lasted on. Watch your body. My body. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm down. I'm down. I'm through. You made it. I made it. Well, at least one Whoa, of us. Whoa, already? Oh, oh. I, I oh. kind of know the secret to this one. The secret to this one's kind of just stay on the side. Yeah. Here I'm coming. I'm coming. Get into Get out it. Of my way. Please let me make it through. Oh, oh no! eliminated. We can stop. We don't have to keep going. No, what? you you go and we'll watch well, you. <laughs> oh, can you find me? Yeah, yeah we can probably find we you. Can find you. What do you guys think? Should we? Should we, are you feeling really good about this one, Shannon? Do you, I, I've only gone through one round. I'm happy to quit. Let's dip out. Let's okay, let's, let's dip both out. dip let's out. Let's out. Let's I mean, you, you can okay. do better. All right, all right. I all can right. do better. I can do better. Yeah. We're exiting the show. That was practice. That was practice. That was a war. That was a warm up just to make sure we're good. 
Um, but going forward, we will do that, Shannon. If if you are, uh... oh, bye. Oh, I'm oh. moving my camera. <laughs> oh. Nice. There it is. Yep. Yeah, you're good. All right, I'm ready when you're ready. There. Cool, cool. And hey, hey, mod team, I'm dipping into uh, just back to CL2. Oh, you're playing right now, it says. Oh, it didn't let me out. Okay, hold on. Let me out, let me out. Let me out leave let me show. <laughs> hey, I real quick. Uh, hey, Shannon, we got a message from uh, one of our longtime viewers, somebody in San Diego with a, with a wonderful gift saying, phenomenal work, Shannon, for your role in The Last of Us 2. Dina helped us see Ellie's journey evolve from the horrific anger brought by revenge to steer us to forgiving and realize the evil brought by vengeance. Thank you for this incredible journey. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm happy I could be a part of it. Yo, it's awesome. Somebody in San Diego is also a huge fan of uh, Life is Strange. Yes. So perhaps they can join you for your playthrough of that. Come through. We would welcome, welcome you. Whoa. Oh Whoa. my goodness. Somebody that in San Diego so is now giving out 50 gift Diego. subs. Wow. We gotta give you guys a big hug. Thank you, thank somebody. Thank you. Oh, you're That's awesome. That's incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, we gotta wait for those two last people Whoa. to get in. Time to jump. All right, gonna do hit it again. Parade. It's hit parade again. Even All right, so you're, redo. What, what side are you always staying to? You're staying to the right? I stay to the right, yeah. Me too, me too. When I don't get knocked off by giant balls. I'm gonna leave that alone. I know. I've been working on Amelia with this. I'm like, we got to just remember that we're streaming. And so sometimes she'll be just, never mind, just streaming. She'll be like, balls. I'm like, nah, we don't just say balls. You, okay, sometimes have you guys seen do. Uncle Buck? Sometimes we do. <laughs> have you seen the movie that. Uncle Buck? Oh, I see you. Ooh. I see you. You're right in front of me. Oh, oh. <laughs> never mind. Oh. Friendship. <laughs> You guys can still hear oh, me, right? I see you again. Okay, I'm following you. I like that you have a little, uh, there's a little arrow above your head so I can track you. Yeah. There we go. Ugh. Oh, you can see your friend. Yeah, yeah, stay together. <gasps> ooh, ooh. Ooh. Watch your face and bones. Up the there side, up the side. There we go. Oh, that's nice how it highlights your... Yeah, I know. We've, we've never played with someone like this before. I we can know. see them go. Aww. You did it. <laughs> Good work, Shannon. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, can you guys still hear me okay? Yeah. We okay, can. just making just... sure. Um, I was going to say, have you guys ever seen the movie Uncle Buck? Sorry, leaning no. forward. Well, no, you're good. there's a young Macaulay Culkin in the movie. I think he's like five or six. And there's a scene where he runs into his parents and he's like, Mom, what's the other word for balls? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> And he goes, he kind of lumbers back down the hallway and he goes, nuts, and then just runs away. And I, <laughs> I think about it all the time. <laughs> oh, man. It's uh, like, Halo Effect loves Uncle Buck. It's the So best. much that they, they're just going, 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 John Candy, that's right. Oh. oh, you know what? Now that you mention it, I do think I've seen that. It's the best. And it's like also like a five-year-old Gabby Hoffman who's already like Oscar-winningly good. Hmm. All right, here we go. Any any pro tips on this one, Shannon? I mean, just time out, like, especially at the end, when you start to make the descent, you want to aim for one that's up, not down, right? Like, just remember. Right, we want to hang back so we time the, the leap, Amelia Rose. I'm going to time this leap. I just did it wrong. I'm already there. <laughs> Nope. Leap. I got this. Just gotta have confidence. Oh, also diving works really well. That's a general, like as a general rule. Consider, oh, oh I messed whoa. up. <laughs> <laughs> I did it! You qualified too, right, Chan? No! Just fell again! Come oh, no, on, I'm you, not got gonna it. Make it. you got it. Keep going, keep going. That was stupid, that was my own fault. Did you really flop? No, I yeah. think we gotta we gotta let this go, and we're gonna stick together. Okay, all right, all right, all right. we'll stick together. We're both gonna win a crown <laughs> together at the same yeah, time. Yeah, right. You should take twin crowns. Okay, I'm gonna take over, and we're okay. gonna jump right back into it. Um, Shannon, 
I, I, I've been sort of, I'm, I'm, I've been sort of ignoring it because it was creeping me out for a while. I didn't understand what was happening, and and now I, I'm starting to get more information. Mouth lady. Oh yeah. Can we? What is this? Can we it's talk a, about mouth lady? It's a thing that I do. Oh, wait, you're you're dipped off camera. Oh so you're... yeah. Here, I'll bring my mic this way. Okay. Let's wait. You're good. There's that thing that I do where I uh, take a talk inside my mouth. Guys! Guys! Can someone let me out of here? That's, it's like a thing. It's like a really How long weird... ago did you eat the mouth lady and, and, and does... How do you do that? It, I wouldn't encourage it. It's... I'm gonna try now. <laughs> uh, please. Yes? What did you do to it? <laughs> what did you do? It's it, the key is to keep your cheeks puffed. And to let the hair out. <laughs> You're gonna get it. But what's funny is <laughs> you I think I think Amelia, we might practice on it. Yeah, I think we gotta practice that one off air, Amelia, just to get to really perfect it. <laughs> it's it's like a fine wine. Like a so wow wow that that was I mean it sounded like there was a person trapped inside of your yeah mouth. they call it mouth lady they my, <laughs> the, my the only shans call it the mouth lady and it's it's a cursed a cursed thing really yeah it seems to be yeah I, it, it's it's definitely cursed oh my gosh we've got a lot of people grabbing in this round I, they're such bullies I don't you know love what the it grabbing. wasn't like that when the fir when the game first came out nobody knew they had that power. Yeah. Yeah. And now, and, well, also, like now, watching other friends play, then you see, you're like, oh, you're a grabber. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever see you're you the that same person. Way again. <laughs> you know, uh, we're we're talking about Last of Us Part Two. Sometimes we're talking about people got biases. We're talking about survival. Uh, have you noticed any particular skin in this game is more likely to grab you and throw you off the edge wolves? than any other? Hot Wolf? dogs are always evil. <laughs> That's my experience with pineapples. <laughs> Interesting. The pineapples have been knocking me off the edge for a long time. But the custom skins, people that have invested in custom skins, I'm wary of. I'm like, mm. you're going to try to ruin my life, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's because yeah. they're 11 years old and better at this game than we'll ever be. <laughs> yeah, it's this in Fortnite, and they're just like, listen, noob, you out. <laughs> All right, well, we're both qualified there, aren't we? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good, good. We're through. This is the one, you guys. I see you. You're up on the top. That was cute. Yeah. And just a reminder, everybody, that Shannon has a scheduled stream on her channel at uh, 6 o'clock, which is two hours later than whatever time it is for you right now. So yeah. we're going to go. One of us is going to win a crown. Uh, we'll let Shannon eat her dinner, and then uh, we'll be happy to host your uh, crossword you're doing tonight, right? Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we're... Uh on, on Fridays, I just do like an hour long stream. I call it nerd power hour. And we just do, we do the crossword and then like some like fun, like word puzzles that are on various different publications sites that are super fun. Cool, we're here, we're here together as team blue. All right, yep, team blue. Don't get jinxed. This one stresses me out. It's a little bit too close to home. It, that's exactly what I think. Oh, there's, a, there's one. Social Beware distancing. the infected. There's a blue infected. Blue infected, we don't have to worry about those. Well, I don't know. Sometimes they, you know, are just reckless and they're going for everybody. I've seen that happen. <laughs> I'm just you hiding just up in the corner. All. Yeah, I do a lot of, um... Oh, God! Get away from him! At least it's not the tail one. Hey, yeah. what's up? Oh, yeah, Good I to hate see the you. tail oh. one. Oh, okay, I got I'm, infected I'm, by my own kind. Yeah, oh, terrible. Really? Me See? too. Just because they're on your team does not mean that they are going to spare you. Yeah, your family can get you sick too. Yeah. yeah that's right, you guys. Mm -hmm. Wear a mask. Oh. Protect yourself and others. Somebody's got to get this egg. Get that egg. <gasps> Qualify. Good work. Nice. That's right. <laughs> I'm so proud of us. Oh, we're <laughs> nailing it. <laughs> Thank you for playing with us. Yeah. Oh my gosh, really it's so cool. fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we've never done a um, we've never done a stream like this where we've patched someone into a game li live. I mean, we're live. We're live. Yeah, we're, that's cool. Shannon's <laughs> live with you. all <laughs> <laughs> And when I was making the thing, I was like, "What am I gonna call it?" I was like, "Shannon is live." Shannon is live. <laughs> She's still alive. 
Well, Chonky's saying this stream is so much fun, so that's that's a good sign. Oh, good. Oh, and it's, C it's Sienna's birthday. Happy birthday to you, Sienna. Happy birthday, Sienna. <gasps> final round. <gasps> Whoa. Wow, Shana, we did it. Fast. We made it to the final round together. Look, it's one or, one or the other, all right? We got to win a crown between the two of us. Yep. Oh, my gosh. So many people. and I've never played this one. Let's do it. You got to keep moving. Keep moving and watch out for the, for the edges. Yeah. Okay, I'm in the middle. Oh, no. I just fell a lot. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, me too. Oh, God. I'm going to hang out down here on blue. Yep, me too. Oh, I see you. I got a good feeling about this right now. You do? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can't dive on these because it takes too long. Yeah, it takes too long to get up. Ah! Oh. Okay, I'll be down here on the bottom waiting for everyone else to plummet past me. Oh, this guy's gonna ruin my vibe. Oh, I died. <sighs> come on, Lastodon. Come on, Lastodon. Do what you were born to do. Watch do out for it. the hot dogs. Uh, no! I'm watching you. No! Oh, I don't want to see who wins. Who cares? We no, don't care. No, we're we out. Don't care. I'm out. Gotta go. If I don't see anyone win, we won. <laughs> Oh man, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna dip us back over just to our to our interview uh, screen okay. there just to round things out. Cool. Um, there we go. You guys, uh, oh, we're so close. So close. I I believed in us. That was nice though that we both made it to the final round. That's unusual. Yeah, yeah. That, I've never seen a game be. I, what was that? Just three rounds. Yeah, it was very generous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, good work, everybody. We nailed it. <laughs> Yo, uh, Shannon, thanks again for joining us on the stream, and uh, we will host you on your on your way to uh, your six six o'clock stream, right? Uh -huh. Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This was so much fun, and thanks everybody in the chat for for coming by and asking questions. It's really really thoughtful. Yeah, it's awesome news. And a, a reminder, you guys, check out Shannon is live is her Twitch channel, mm -hmm. and uh, also we've got the link for Twitter and Instagram flowing through there we're gonna take a five minute hydration break and uh shannon we would love to have you uh join us on stream again some other time and uh maybe even in real life when the situation allows i for would it. love that that would be amazing sweet awesome cool. Thanks, everybody guys. say thank you shannon thank you we appreciate you <laughs> and uh we'll see you guys in five minutes after a short hydration break see ya